Xander said something interesting to me, guys. You know, I think the reason that we see such inconsistency sometimes in the play calling, I think it comes down to commitment. I think it comes down to commitment. Xander said something, and you know what? He's right. If you're going to name this kid the starting quarterback of your football team moving forward, the organization has to be committed on that style of play. The news in football is enormous right now, is it not? I mean, just think about something here for a second. What are the main, what are the main movies and storylines that are on all social media that you see on television that kind of light that that fire and kind of give you something to want to go to? And it, it is just it's something that it just resonates. It's polarizing. It's politics and it's sports. And boy, do we have it, man. College football coaches, you tell me, if you were a successful college coach right now, would you really think about coaching in the NFL? Why? Brian Kelly was just offered a 10-year, $95 million deal to coach LSU. Why in the world would you want to coach in the National Football League and have to hear a bunch of crap from general managers and owners? It's incredible. Incredible. The storyline with Lincoln Riley and him going and taking that Southern Cal job. It's amazing. We're going to get to that here in a minute. You know, what I really do like, by the way, before we start, I tell you guys this all the time. We're going to get into our topic here. Guys, I appreciate you guys stepping in with us as you do each and every single day. We're loaded with stuff, too. We got Rick Goslin, Hall of Fame voter, Talk of Fame Network. He'll be in hour number two. We're trying to still run down our friend Mike Golick, too. He's doing something with Subway today, so hopefully he can step in with us. So we're trying to get an opportunity to have him um, jump aboard with us today as well and sit here and talk some football with us here. I love telling you this, guys. You bring the topics. I kind of fill it in too, but if you could do me a favor as we start the show, please hit that like button. You guys have been sensational the last couple of months, and I can't thank you enough for making the show one of the fastest growing shows, okay, at Jacob and on YouTube. So here we go. You know, I love having a pregame conversation with my guy, Xander. I really do. You know, I had a topic, and I'm going to get to that other topic that I was going to bring up, but Xander's right about something. Now, the news today, Jalen Hurts has an ankle injury. The Eagles are going to go forward as he is going to play this weekend versus the Jets. But they're getting Gardner Minshew ready, and they're getting this guy ready to be uh, able to go out there and take snaps against the Jets if need be. Okay, so he will be prepared like he's a starter this week, which means you're probably going to spit split half the reps here. Okay, so they're saying he's going to play Jalen Hurts. But they're preparing Gardner Minshew, so that's a good thing. Xander said something interesting to me, guys. You know, I think the reason that we see such inconsistency sometimes in the play calling, I think it comes down to commitment. I think it comes down to commitment. Xander said something, and you know what? He's right. If you're going to name this kid the starting quarterback of your football team moving forward, the organization has to be committed on that style of play. When they hired Nick Sirianni, they weren't hiring Nick Sirianni because of his skill set with RPOs. They were hiring him because here is a good play caller, He got a great recommendation from Frank Wright. This is a guy that wants to throw the ball 38 times a game. How many many times do you hear Gary Cobb say that? They are so in love with throwing the ball. 
that it even gets in the way of game plans. We saw it against the Giants last week. Did we not? Will Howie and the owner of the Eagles be committed to this style? Man, I don't know. I don't know because remember something. They also want to have that football team to be entertaining. Not that I think that that has anything to do with winning. Sometimes you get Patrick Mahomes. Sometimes you get Phil Simms. You still win championships. Phil Simms has more championships than Patrick Mahomes. So, I mean, you know, I mean, whatever style gets you across the finish line. Do you think ownership and the front office will be committed to Jalen 100%? I don't know that. I don't know that. However, your offensive line dictates that. What you've done in the old line, now they are getting older. Are they going to continue to retool that offensive line? Are they going to go out and maybe get a power back? Are they, because, you know, think about it. No disrespect to Boston Scott and to Miles Sanders. These guys are dudes. They're good players, but they're dudes. They're not Alvin Kamara. Okay? They're 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 not Dalvin Cook. They're not Derrick Henry. Okay? That's a different breed of dude. You guys got guys. Zeke's out of gas in Dallas. Okay? Coop, I mean, Pollard's the better back. You got issues all over Dallas. Mari Cooper with his money, but I'm talking more about the back situation here. So I would say to you this, do you truly believe that the Eagles will be committed on this style of play? I don't know, man. If I were to say, I'd say no. I'd say no. You could do so much with this style. Because if, if, if the Eagles were committed to Jalen, wouldn't they just go like this? This guy's our quarterback for the future. Even if they were lying, GMs and coaches lying, I think we're learning a lesson in that now on how coaches lie. I don't believe that they would be committed. Do you guys think they would be committed? Man. I just don't see it. But that's why I think we're seeing the inconsistency in play calling. Or as I said yesterday, situational play calling. They did run the ball 33 times for 206. It's a lot of yards. And at 6-3 a carry, that just shows you kind of what, what Xander said a little bit a couple minutes ago. So you have that dynamic in the game on your side of – the stat sheet, and you're winning like that, and you decide to go away from that? Why? Because you're not committed, are you? It's a great observation. It's absolutely a great observation because your actions are not speaking to what you're saying or trying to do when it comes to developing the quarterback. Yeah, we're committed to Jalen. Yeah, we're committed. Then you throw the ball 31 times. It's almost like you're fighting your urge versus knowing what the right thing to do is, and that's run the ball. There is no question the commitment from the Eagles is not set in stone yet, or their actions would speak, and they're, they're surrounding him with more talent would be evident. They're not, they're not basically, they're telling you one thing and doing another. We're committed to Jalen. We love him. See, the more they throw the ball, the more you're setting him up for failure. That's what we're saying here. If you see him throw the ball over 30 times in a game, they're setting him up for failure. You don't have experience at the wideouts. The only place you have experience is in the run game. Why would you get away from it? 
You set Jalen Hurts up for failure every single time he throws the ball over 30 times. So the commitment is in the philosophy, isn't it? And how they approach every game. Now, is that a directive from the front office? Who gets their directives from the owner? Hence, we get into that meddling again. Style versus content. And the content being wins and losses matter the most. Not how it looks. So, are they committed? They're just, they're, they're, they're not showing you the commitment. Like, like, in this recent Giant game, what would propel you not to keep running the ball even if you were third and nine? Run it. You were getting six yards of carry. You were moving the chains and you were moving the clock. There were only 10 possessions in the fucking game, period. You didn't have numerous opportunities. That clock was going to run. The Giants ran the clock also on purpose. They limited series. So when you know that, and you have to know that when you're on the sidelines, this is going to be a quick game. They're not committed. Will know. How about this, guys? You know, you know, you know, you know the game where he threw for very little yards, but they win the ball game. I can't think of the game. Okay, that was the perfect Jalen Hurts game. 150 yards throwing the ball, 70 on the ground, running game, 240 yards on the ground. Your defense playing lights out. That's the kind of game you want. That's the kind of game you want. So the commitment has to be in their actions. Am I right? Saints, thank you. Smile, Saints. Absolutely. One last, before we get to all you guys here, and I'm going to bring you guys in here in a minute, and I'll explain to everybody. What to do with Jalen Rager? It's not that simple just to say cut him. It's not that simple. You just can't do this. Well, we'll let, let's just release him. No. You're going to try to get as much value as you possibly can. Don't screw this thing up like you screwed up the Wentz deal. Okay, this guy is a first-round draft choice. You do everything in your possible to try to get some asset back. Any Anything. Seventh-rounder, sixth-rounder, whatever. A player. Maybe you trade a player. You try to do everything in your power, in my opinion, to try to move this kid. Got to get him off your roster. He's taking a roster spot up that you can use and somebody that could be more productive. He is a non-productive player on that roster. He hurts the Eagles' chances on winning games. When you got a player like that on your roster, Jalen Rieger, he hurts the Eagles' chances on winning. You move him in the offseason, you try to hide him on your roster now as much as possible. I don't know why Watkins is not getting more opportunities. He needs to, but it's time to have a come to Jesus conversation and that personnel department where people look at Jalen Rager and go like this. It's time to sit down, son. Then you move him in the off season. So maybe I'm answering it with two answers here. You sit him and then you move him. You got to get that guy's ass out, out of there and out of situations. You target a guy like that eight times. And you make him your number one go-to guy in a crucial NFC East game that you really needed to win to put the pressure on the Cowboys who are going into that Thursday night game banged up. Now Mike McCarthy's not going to be able to coach. They got chaos in that organization in a little bit right now. And you lay an egg in New York. You lay an egg in New York. And again, this goes back to the main topic. Do you believe that the Eagles are going to be truly committed to the style of Jalen Hurts. And what to do with Jalen Rager? What do you do with this guy? All right. Hey, guys, do me a favor again. Like the show. This is what we do. You guys bring anything to the table here. If you guys 
have posted something and I missed it, please. Let's just hit on it here, and we'll put you in the mix here. We got a ton of stuff to hit on. I mean, these college coaches and the college carousel. Hey, real quick before I get to you guys, how would you like to be a player at Notre Dame and you're laying in bed and you look over at your phone and it's midnight and your coach texts you and says, hey, it's been nice, but I'm leaving and I'm fucking heading to LSU. And you guys are still in the mix for a national championship spot in the semifinals and your coach bails on you. How would you like that? By the way, I'm not talking about if it's right or wrong. Of course, you jump at a 10-year, $95 million deal at LSU. What are you, crazy? I'm not suggesting that. But it just shows you don't ever believe a coach, ever. They're liars. They're professional liars. How about this on my Twitter page? We've had him on our show, Tony Casillas, one of the greatest players in the history of Oklahoma Sooners football. Won a Lombardi Award. Second player taken by the Falcons. In 85, he started following Lincoln Riley's when Lincoln Riley got the job at SC. You know what he did? He blocked him because he didn't want to follow any longer any of the legendary Oklahoma Sooner players. I was like, what a low life. He's such a salesman. And, and again, 10 years, 95 million bucks. I'm doing it too. So we'll talk more about that. The rights and the wrongs and then the reality of it. All right. As I said to you guys, these two topics are pretty essential in what's going to happen with this football team as we move forward, is it not? It's not so much that Jalen Jalen Hurts is not a good football. We all know he's a good football player. But are they going to be committed to that style? Are they going to be committed? And what to do with Jalen Rager? I say sit him and then move him. Okay, sit them, then move them. Big Chris says, Jimmy G looking good, man. You know what, Big Chris? I threw this off too when we were doing our pregame show. I think Jimmy Garoppolo would look sensational in Philadelphia Green. Six straight games now, he's been over 100 QBR. They're winning again. The only question on him is really durability. He's a good football player. Look at his one loss record. Garoppolo's got a great one-loss record as a starting quarterback. He's got a great, great number. Okay, and he's a pretty young kid. And he, he's not going to cost you $40 million bucks. That's something that the Eagles would love. You're looking at a $32 million a year guy. Instead of paying 42 or up in the 40s, get him a new contract. Jimmy Garoppolo could win with that football team. Because you know why? Garoppolo would know he got to run the ball. East Canham says, don't want him. Isn't that funny? Matt P just says this. Belichick loved Jimmy G. Why do you think? Because he's a winner. You know what, too? Matt, to your point, let's take a look at that. So wait a minute. Belichick drafts Brady. He drafts Matt Castle, who won in – a division title for Kansas City and won 11 games when he was in New England when Brady was hurt. He drafted Jacoby Brissett. He drafted Jimmy Garoppolo. And now he's drafted Mac Jones, who's going to be the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year and maybe get to an AFC Championship game. I think that guy knows quarterbacks, don't you? Don't you think Belichick knows quarterbacks? His record is... His record indicates that. You're telling me you think that Howie Roseman knows quarterbacks more than what, than what Bill Belichick does? Are you crazy? Every quarterback that Bill Belichick has drafted has gone on to get a contract on another team and start at one time or another. Old Cole says, we just got rid of an injured Carson Wentz. That's a great take, Old Cole. You're right. Easy Money says, any decent quarterback could win 10 games with this current staff. Eagles O-line is top tier. No question. Absolutely no question. Big Chris, Jimmy G would be protected with this O-line, and he's accurate. 
Mac is looking great, Ken says. Belichick is a quarterback factory. And get this, so is Nick Saban. Who would have thought Nick Saban, three yards in a cloud of dust, would be a quarterback factory at Alabama? Alabama? Guys, they were great in the 60s and early 70s at quarterback with Stabler and Namath, then Richard Todd. Then it dried up, and they didn't have anybody in the game. Jeff Rutledge and stuff like that, there was nobody in the game. And all of a sudden now, they've changed their offense, and they're a spread offense now. Tug of Viola starting and doing very well. Carlos says front office is a bullshit factory. Which ones aren't? East Canada for life. We back talking about quarterbacks again. I know, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about Jimmy. Well, wait a minute here. It's another great point. I think Jalen Hurts has earned the right, guys, for the full year evaluation of 17 games. That's all I've signed up for. I, I it's all I've signed up for. Could he be the future of this team? Yeah. You know why? Because if there's nobody out there that the Eagles can't grab, I'm very comfortable with Jalen Hurts as my quarterback. But if I can upgrade that position like any other position on the field or even coach, why wouldn't I address that? Chris says, Hurts is pro feet college arm. You think Tom Brady had a great arm when he came out? It's Caster Green. Jalen Hurts is the guy for me this year and next year. So you want to give him two years. I'm I'm, Green, I'm okay with that. But if you if we're we're in a conversation maybe with Jimmy Garoppolo or Russell, Russell Wilson is not playing in Seattle. He is not playing in Seattle. And to what Xander was talking to me about prior to going on the air here, who do you think the owner and the general manager would be more committed to? Jimmy, here, here. I think this is great. Who do you think the Eagles would be more committed to? Okay. And their style. Russell Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo, or Jalen Hurts? Let's put those three in the machine. Which one of those three do you think Nick Sirianni would be committed to? Russell Wilson? Jimmy Garoppolo? Jimmy Garoppolo also coached by Kyle Shanahan and Bill Belichick? Jesus. You don't think he doesn't understand systems? I like that pedigree. Just Hey, you think there's any coincidence that Mac Jones and the success that he's having in New England? Guys, follow me here. His coaches were Nick Saban and Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniel. I mean, surely you think there's something to that. These are three head coaches in the NFL at one time or another. One's the greatest college coach of all time. The other's the greatest NFL coach. And he's got a guy who was the heir apparent to take over for Belichick in New England. And Josh McDaniel was the head coach in Denver. I mean, guys, that's pretty – how could he fail? Oh, Chris is saying this now. Wait a minute here. There could be something to that, Chris. It's an Italian thing. So maybe so, because I am very partial to Italian guys. Fly says, I'm still in on Hurts. I am too. Fly. No way, Fly. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm not overpaying for – from what I've seen so far with Jalen Hurts, I'm not overpaying for anything. I'm not surrendering three first-rounders for Deshaun Watson, I don't think. And I do think also, too – Krause Jr. and I were talking about this. I think the running through the tape is going to also tell us a little more about how we feel about him. Is that fair? Right now, we're doing this on Jalen. We're talking about commitment now from the organization. We're talking about his style and the proper evaluation time. I think it's enough. He runs through the tape, 17 NFL football games. Okay, you're going to be over 20-some-odd starts. I think that's fair. What they've done in Cleveland by going over, what is it, 58 games now is obnoxious. You know who Baker Mayfield is. 
Like, you know who that guy is. He's not changing in any way who he is. Fly says Baker Mayfield was drafted. He was drafted uh, number one overall. And I look at him and I'm like this. That guy's not the number one pick in the draft. The results you're getting. Hey, Fly, I want to show you guys something about getting. Guys, let me, let me, let me show you something here. Do you think the Matthew stat, this goes into the Eagles going out and getting a free agent quarterback here. Guys, do you think the Matthew Stafford deal has been good or bad in Los Angeles? You think it's been good or bad? Do you think it's been good or bad? The deal with the Rams. I mean, they 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 surrendered a boatload of first rounders in a third rounder. Easy money says bad. Stafford needs a running game. You know what? Hey, Paul, I've been hearing that f- since Detroit. How many times are we going to keep giving that excuse for that guy? X says overrated. I don't want the Eagles wasting these first rounders. Alden Hutchinson, I love that kid. Okay, let me let me let me go with my spin here. Do you know four of the last five years that Jared Goff was in Los Angeles? You know what the record was? They were seven and four. Do you know what their record is right now? They're seven and four. So don't you think surrendering two ones and a three that you would be looking down at your ledger sheet and going like this, man, I gave the same shit up to be in the same place. I'm in the same place I was and look at the stuff I gave away to be in the same place. Jared Goff at least got you to a Super Bowl. Hey, and by the way, in no way am I saying Matthew Stafford, just optics wise, you see he's a better quarterback but the results aren't there. The Rams are in the same place they were last year and four of the last five years. And you gave two ones up and a third rounder to be in the same place? That is a lot to give up. That's what you've got to think about if you're going to move off of Jalen Hurts. You go out and you get somebody and you bring him in and you give up first rounders and you fuck up, you're going to set your franchise back 10 years. You're in the same place in LA as you were last year through 11 games. And four of the last five years, golf was in Los Angeles. And you know what's funny? I keep hearing the same stuff like you guys were mentioning. It needs a running game. Okay. Geez, you got Cooper Cup. You've... They brought in Odell Beckham. Your old line's not bad. Your defense, Xander's boy, Aaron Donald. He hates when I say that. Jalen Ramsey. Now you bring in Von Miller. I mean, guys, you've got to be kidding me, right? So you gave up all that equity, all that equity for you to be able to do this. All right, I just got a text from Mike Gullick. He's going to try to come on here um, at 4.30. So we're going to take a timeout, and Mike Gullick will join us, and we'll get his thoughts on what he thinks with Jalen Hurts. We'll do it next. Keep it here on the National Football Show. (laughs) 